PIDA is a continental framework. It focuses on regional and continental projects. That makes it unique. PIDA was adopted by the African Head of State in 2012. From 2012 to now, I will just run through some of the progress that we've made. As you recall, when PIDA was adopted, there were 51 projects and programs. These 51 projects and programs have been further decomposed to 433 specific projects and programs. These 433 specific programs and projects, pro projects have been further prioritized to 83, 83 specific projects. And now, uh, during the last, in June, we had a conference in Dakar, the Dakar Financing Conference, which presented 16 of these projects that are in a state of bankability and also in the state of early implementation. That is progress number one. The other progress, if you recall, most of the continental initiatives in the past did not identify responsibilities and roles. PIDA has the institutional architecture for infrastructure development, which is the flip side of PIDA, that identifies and clearly states who is responsible for what. For example, the African Union Commission is responsible for the policy issues surrounding PIDA. The NEPAD agency is responsible for the facilitation and implementation of PIDA. And the regional economic communities, they are responsible at the ground level. So IADA has clearly identified who is responsible for what and who does what. Progress number two. Progress number three. Because of the limited capacity at the regional economic level to implement PIDA, because we're talking about $68 billion projects. The African, Union, the African Development Bank and the GIZ have committed resources to capacitate the RECs by allowing two or three consultants at each REX to help to, uh, specifically to help with the PIDA implementation programs and projects. Now, that's project number th progress number three. Progress number four. We are now at the stage of implementation. The RECs are being capacitated specifically for PIDA, and now we are at the same time we're trying to, to domesticate PIDA so that the national level, at the end of the day, the states really have to implement the projects. The, the project belongs to the states. So we are trying to domesticate PIDA at the national level, at the same time capacitate the RECs, at the same time trying to identify the projects, I talked about 16, that are ready and almost bankable to move forward. It's uh, the capacity building of the stakeholders of uh, PIDA. I mean, uh, the agency of, in charge of coordination and planning, it is uh, NEPAD, NPCA, regional economic communities, and uh, member states. It's very important to make sure that uh, all these stakeholders are able to handle the portfolio of PIDA project to move them to delivery, as it was uh, said in the first session, because it's very important that it must move from talking to action. That's why the capacity building was noticed as a key uh, constraint to be tackled as soon as possible to facilitate uh, program implementation. And the other aspect also of challenge is project preparation. As it was said, we have to know that early stage preparation project is responsibility of project stakeholders, project owners, because moving them to bankability, we must be able to have people to do it. I mean, tools like project preparation or development units because we're talking about regional and continental programs, so involving many countries. So the way we are going to manage the project is a bit different because we are going to have many partners with sometimes many uh, interests. The, the, the third issue is the resource mobilization issues. For some project in PIDA, that are at the early stage, 
member states who are the final uh, owner at uh, the end of the day must be uh, involved in project preparation under the coordination of regional economic communities. And this project preparation is key because private sector is not going to do it from the ground. He wants project advanced so they can have a good discussion to how they can move project to delivery. Uh, recognizing that uh, the PIDA project are regional and continental, it traverses between two or three more countries. The issue of ownership is fundamental. That is a challenge. Who actually owns a project? We still, because like I said before, we are trying to domesticate PIDA. So the issue of ownership is a challenge. These projects physically sit in national territories. So in terms of implementation, you do need the countries concerned uh, to prioritize these projects, for them to happen within the duration envisioned. And for that to happen, uh, the effort is to try and get countries to include, some are already there, but some are not. And we need to get the countries to include these projects in their national development priorities. Because then, that makes it easier for planning purposes, for allocation of finances, even for development partners to come in and support implementation of the project. So the countries individually on which the projects are sitting need to include these projects as their national priorities, the segments that sit within their territories, so that it's easier to plan for uh, development financing over long term. That's the domestication and why it is important.